As we're finishing up in chapter nine here, um, the last slide that we wanna look at, we're gonna focus on electromagnetic radiation, um, which is going to be the broader term um, for um, the high energy that we've been seeing so far. Um, and actually, um, electromagnetic radiation can be low or it can be high, and our focus has really been on the high energy radiation. So if I can just rewind you to the beginning of this chapter. Um, remember, we've been looking at imaging all um, day and specifically focusing on the imaging that uses high energy radiation. And that high energy radiation um, shows up from light bulbs or x-ray bulbs or from an unstable nucleus, all right? So um, we are going to just learn a little bit more about the radiation as we finish here. Um, and as we do that, let's look at this spectrum here, okay? Um, so we will look some at our x-rays here in a moment, um, but let's first look at this spectrum. So on the spectrum, you can see the wavelengths, um, which I had on our first slide here. We had these long wavelengths and then we have short wavelengths. So long wavelengths, um, a wavelength is going to be the distance that it takes to go from one peak to the next peak, um, but long wavelengths have low energy. So low energy. Um, and this is where we saw um, this type of energy, this type of radiation is used for MRIs. This is safe. This is not going to harm you in any way. As we move towards visible light, and if this is colored, you can see more that the colors show up here, but visible, this is actually what we see. Um, and once we get to wavelengths that are shorter than what we see, something has changed here, okay? Um, now we have what we've been talking about all day, which is the high energy radiation, okay? Um, and that high energy radiation um, is going to require some safety, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, at this end, we have short wavelengths and we have high energy. And with that, we have power, okay? So this is like nuclear power, um, nuclear imaging. And along with power comes danger, right? That's like a fact of life. So we have power, but we have to be careful with it. And in terms of techniques that we have been looking at, x-rays, CTs, and anything nuclear imaging is going to use um, energy that falls at this end of the spectrum. So something with higher energy than visible light that we're exposed to. Um, now, x-rays and CTs, just to kind of give us a, a little triangle to look at here with what's going on with those, and you might contrast this with what we looked at back here for the um, radon a couple slides ago, okay? Um, again, there's, there's nothing to see when you go to see x-rays, so again, they've got the symbol on the door. Um, there's nothing to see because it's higher energy than what our eyes can visibly pick up. Um, notice there's no chemical reaction here. All we have is just pure energy. So I've got pure energy just coming out of that bulb and there's no unstable isotope um, in there. When we talk about um, this energy symbolically, we use this um, lowercase Greek lambda letter that stands for wavelength. And we would say, how long is the wavelength? What's the distance between those um, peaks on our waves? So five nanometers is a very short wavelength, um, and that means we're gonna have very high energy. So there's no purple nucleus, it's just pure energy, pure waves, when we talk about what we're using um, for x-rays and CAT scans. Um, now, wherever your orange energy comes from, whether it's coming from a nucleus or just from a light bulb, okay, we have to be careful. This is that danger piece. So with high energy um, radiation, um, we have to consider our risks and our benefits. Because just because something's dangerous doesn't mean you should never use it. Um, we wanna consider the risks and the benefits. So high energy radiation has enough energy to ionize atoms. Um, ionizing sometimes can destroy those atoms or cause them to destroy other atoms. Um, so this is the danger piece. We have to be safe. Um, and so some of the ways that we are safe um, would be to shield ourselves. Um, some of our safety precautions be the lead aprons that you've maybe worn at the dentist or at the doctors before. Um, on a technician here, um, they have a little badge right here that detects 
um, the radiation and they have to send that in every few months. Um, if you are a nuclear technician, you might have a ring that also detects that radiation. Um, and those both make sure that you're not exposed to too much radiation. Um, if you're exposed to too much, you have to take time off so that you are not exposed to more radiation than your annual um, allotment. Um, so you have some of those precautions, okay? These don't shield you, they just count up what you've got. Um, lead aprons, lead walls. If you go to have x-rays done, look, there's probably a little lead lining in the wall. Um, so those are some of the, the physical things we can do. Also, this is just broad principles for how we're going to stay safe around high energy radiation. We want to minimize the time that we're exposed and the dose. So don't be in the room with the patient. You see your dentist assistants and um, x-ray assistants step out of the room. And if you do have to have an x-ray, have a small dose. You do have to have nuclear imaging, have a small dose. So minimize time and dose, and then maximize your distance from the source. So get as far away from that um, nuclear reaction as possible. Um, shield using lead or dirt or sunscreen. We use sunscreen to shield ourselves from ultraviolet, which is right here. Um, dirt, you're gonna find that all of the nuclear imaging is usually found in either the basement or the ground floor so that you've got some dirt um, protecting you. Um, another thing that is used to shield radiation is cement. So if you go to um, somewhere where they have radiation therapy for cancer, you've got huge like four foot thick cement walls usually to shield so that radiation doesn't get out. Um, so to be safe, you're gonna minimize time and dose, you're gonna maximize how far you are, you're gonna shield yourself, um, you're gonna maybe use sunscreen, which is a chemical way of shielding it. In terms of dose, just a couple terms to be familiar with over here. Diagnostic imaging is gonna be um, where you use a relatively small dose, right? Just to see what's going on with your thyroid. Therapeutic doses are gonna be where you use a large quantity of that high energy radiation, and that's gonna be there um, to kill cells. And so this is going to be a relatively large dose. Um, and that might be if you wanna kill thyroid cells, if you've got um, cancerous cells there. Um, so just be able to use those two vocabulary words. All right, so looking on our last page, you've got some really helpful reference things and some practice also. Um, you want to be able to utilize these different types of particles um, when you write the nuclear reactions. Here are those half-lives that we looked at. Um, here's some practice with the comparing and contrasting um, that we did on the second slide, so you can practice those. Um, for example, so nuclear medicine, is this a nuclear reaction, x-ray tube, or both? Nuclear medicine is only going to fit into the nuclear reaction category. We don't use x-ray tubes in nuclear medicine. CAT scans? CAT scans are not nuclear. Remember, our nuclear reactions have those tracer isotopes in them, and x-rays are just pure energy. So here's our difference, right? X-rays are just the energy, and nuclear has that tracer in it. So a CAT scan is just a bunch of x-rays. So this is only x-rays. So I'm gonna leave those for you to practice and you'll see some of that on your homework. And then finally, um, I have a little sample of what you might actually see from a nuclear medicine department. Um, my stepmom um, battled breast cancer and she would always bring me um, her little souvenirs home and be like, Joanna, I brought you some chemistry um, from imaging today. Um, and she's gone now, but I, I like to have that little bit to remind me of her um, as I look here. So, um, Leslie would come and she said, hey, this is what they gave me before one of her breast cancer surgeries. Um, and you can see some things that we've talked about today. So TC99M, that is the radioisotope, the metastable technetium um, that they injected her with. And it is going to now give off radiation for a while. Okay, um, here is 2.68 millicuries. So this unit is a new one but don't let it throw you. It's milli, just like millimeters or milliliters. And then curie is what we're using instead of grams or meters or whatever. So this is the dose that they gave her um, on that date at that time. So this is the millicuries. Um, and then T1 half, we've seen that, right? That is our half-life. So the half-life of this technetium isotope is 6.02 hours. Um, so they gave her this dose and I think it was to help them um, find some of the cancer in her lymph nodes. Um, so they were gonna be able to scan for it during surgery. And they gave her this dose. So we have our radioisotope is gonna be giving off energy 
um, and it's going to cut in half every six hours. So they have on here also then time. Time is everything with this nuclear medicine, right? Um, and anytime you see nuclear medicine, you know you've got those radioisotopes present. Um, time of detection, three days. So after three days, there will be so little of this left active in her, giving off energy, that they're not going to be able to detect it anymore. So they gave this to her like the day before surgery, and then she was in the next day within one day. So you would have a smaller dose present, but still enough for them to detect. So I just thought that is a really cool like, oh, okay, that's what they would actually hand you um, in nuclear medicine. Um, and all those things and vocabulary that we learned today. So practice, bring your questions to class, and good job today.